Hello friends, by taking a brief intro of resistors in the previous video, you must have known about some basic details of resistors and now we'll move on slowly into this ocean of details. First of all, we'll deal with the classification of resistors. So resistors can be classified, broadly classified in two ways. First is depending on the input and the output, depending on the input type and the output type. So what type of data you are inputting into the register and taking as an output in which form are you taking the data as an output so both can be either serial or parallel now what do i mean with it you'll just see in a short while serial is also known as temporal so serial data has another name as temporal and parallel data is also known as spatial uh, so sorry about that it should be spatial so how does uh, what does a serial input look like? So it looks like something like this. That is, I'll be just entering the data from this one entry point and uh, the registers will be communicating, sorry, the flip-flops will be communicating with each other to get the following data input bits and the output will also be fetched from this other exit point. So there'll be only one entry point for your data and there will be one exit point for your data. So there is one entry input point and one entry, uh, one exit output point, right? And now how, do, how does this entire thing happen? We will get to know in a short while. So let's just visualize it, visualize it with some real data input. Let's take a data input which is 1010, right? So the recap was for n data bits we need n flip-flops that means for this particular data input which has four data bits one two three four we'll be needing four flip-flops so it will look something like this again if you analyze this this has only one data in entry input point and one data exit point right so i'll have to enter my data one by one from here and since it has only one data input point, I'll be entering it as one input bit at a time, right? So the output sequence will essentially depend upon the sequence of the input data bits, right? For example, let's take a very simple example. Let's say if I take some asymmetric uh, data input, let's say I take this, right? Now, if I start entering my data, this data input from this left to right let's say then i'll be entering this series of ones first right so if i enter this one after a certain time period this flip-flop will generate some output and this uh, this bit will either be transferred as it is over here as an input to the next flip-flop or it will be toggled we'll go into the details how that happens but just for now let's say it will be uh, shifted to this flip-flop as an input maybe the same bit gets shifted or the bit gets changed right so in the next clock pulse this flip-flop will get its first input then in the consequent one this will get as input and in the next one this will get some uh, input from this flip-flop so one thing is the Input of this flip-flop is actually the output of the previous one, right? So output of one flip-flop becomes the input of the other. Next thing over here is that if I'm entering my data bits in this order, I'll be entering it something like this, one, 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 and then zero, right? And the output that I'll be getting is this, one, then the next one would come, this one, then the next one will come, and finally zero. So, which is the correct data input I wanted to achieve at the output end. But what will happen if I would have entered it in the order right to left? Then I would have started from this zero and consequently I would have got the first bit as zero. And therefore you can just see that in similar manner you will get the string as the inverted form. As in the inverted form. So, the output clearly depends upon the way we enter the input so how this happened this how this entire thing works upon that we'll see in a short while in the next session so stay tuned and let's see how this works in the next session thank you